In 1982, arch-conservative pro-Israelis Margaret Thatcher and Ronald Reagan stopped arms to Israel during a war. But in 2024, European Greens, Social Democrats and Liberals are arming a genocide. Shame on ye. International law and humanity requires lethal arms to Israel. Must stop now. Prima is a Horizon Europe project to sustainably manage water and agri-food systems in the Mediterranean basin. So could we please acknowledge the grotesque irony of Israel being one of its 19 partner countries. When Israel famously, notoriously and systematically deprives Palestinians of water rights and their farmland, it has deliberately subjected Palestinians to chronic water shortages for decades. So while Israel is a water superpower, thanks to massive investment in technological innovation, no doubt in part funded from the EU by Horizon 2020 and Horizon Europe, Palestinians go thirsty. So will the EU funding that Israel gets through this programme be used to implement a sustainable system of water rights and create a sustainable agri-food system for all from the river to the sea? Or will it be used to pad the coffers of an apartheid state to help pay for the ongoing genocide in Gaza? I think we all know the answer. International law is in trouble these days. The US and its allies they seldom actually talk about the UN Charter anymore. They prefer to refer to the international rules-based order, which they make up as they go along, which makes it easy for them to actually facilitate the genocide that's taking place in Gaza. Likewise, if we look at organisations like the ICC, we had uh, a woman from Ghana, uh, Fatou Bensouda, and she had the audacity to threaten to investigate the US for war crimes in Afghanistan and also to investigate the possibility of Israeli war crimes in the occupied territories. So that didn't go down very well and the US threatened her. She soon lost her job and she was replaced by Karim Khan who is very uh, amenable to the US interest. He recently went to Israel and he met the victims of the Hamas attack but refused to meet the Palestinian victims. This man cannot possibly be trusted to implement justice at the ICC. It's an absolute joke that he still has the job and he should be removed if he's of any interest in the future of ICC. Thank you very much, President. Human rights are universal. That means everyone enjoys them equally. But the EU doesn't believe in that anymore. In 2020, Ursula von der Leyen announced the EU's new geopolitical agenda on human rights and democracy. So these days, the EU is all about the rules-based international order, all about geopolitics. So when the European Council President Charles Michel congratulated vicious old-school Azerbaijani dictator and ethnic cleanser of Nagorno-Karabakh, Ilham Aliyev, earlier this month on his re-election. That's the EU's geopolitical agenda on human rights and democracy in action. If your human rights is uh, geopolitical rather than universal, then there's no contradiction at all between, say, supporting a genocide in Gaza or congratulating a war criminal on his rigging of an election and then turning around a minute later and screaming at human rights abuses in Iran and Russia. In this agenda, human rights are only a stick to beat the people you don't like with. Simple as that, easy peasy, might is right, and if you don't like it, this is the new 19th century, same as the old. Thank you very much. Are we really going to pretend that the EU is concerned about human rights after four months of complicity with the murderous Israeli regime? Citizens across Europe are sick and tired of the empty words and the expressions of concern for the terrible things happening in Gaza. We say the EU must uphold international human rights and humanitarian law. We say that we're concerned about sexual violence, gender-based violence, and the torture and killing of civilians and prisoners of war. But this only applies to countries that we amount to our geopolitical opponents. When the crimes are committed by our like-minded partners, like Israel or the US, we fall silent. We say it's compl complicated granting the likes of Israel impunity. Even with the weight of 30,000 dead Palestinians on our conscience, we still haven't found it in ourselves to call for a ceasefire 
and an end to the European military support for Israel. So much for European values. In October, I said the 50 million Ukraine facility is a rushed, inadequate mechanism tailor-made for corruption and embezzlement of EU funds on a massive scale. This is still the case. Many findings and recommendations put forward in the June 2023 European Court of Auditors' opinion have been ignored. They found that persistent grand corruption and state capture posed a systemic risk for the Ukraine facility. So they called on the Commission to develop a strategic document on how to prevent and combat grand corruption and state capture. Where is it? We are talking, taking billions from other parts of the EU budget and there are no provisions to ensure that the funds don't end up with companies owned by the likes of Zelensky and the oligarchs close to them. The dogs in the street know that Ukraine is one of the most corrupt countries on earth. So why are basic anti-corruption standards being waived in the case of Ukraine? Wouldn't it make an awful lot more sense if we work for peace before we start pouring billions more into Ukraine? You're burning EU citizens' money. You are being irresponsible. Syria has been strangled by Western unilateral sanctions. Malnutrition is at critical levels. Electricity, water, irrigation and sanitation infrastructure is crippled. Hyperinflation is rampant. The US occupation steals oil, burns wheat crops, and along with the Israelis, continuously bombs Syria. Syria doesn't bomb Israel. Turkey occupies the Northwest, and Israel illegally occupies and plunders the Golan Heights. But still, the report lays all responsibility at the feet of the Syrian government. No mention of the brutal proxy war backrolled by the US, EU, Turkey, and the Gulf states. Far-right extremist forces armed and trained by the US in Turkey and Jordan. As Jake Sullivan said back in 2012, Al-Qaeda is on our side in Syria. No mention of French industrial giant Lafarge convicted for providing material aid to ISIS and its complicity in crimes against humanity. If we want to normalize relations with Syria, as this report claims to, we must own up to our destruction and strangulation of Syria today. And it should be noted that the author of this report was in the French cabinet that decided to illegally bomb Syria in 2018. It was a war crime. Syria, a land of forgotten conflict, says the explanatory uh, statement on this report. And the report itself is certainly more than a little bit forgetful about how the dire situation it accurately describes in Syria has come about. No mention of Israel, Saudi Arabia, the Gulf, the West, sudden onset selective amnesia. It's as if we'd nothing got to do with this war. It just happened. As if the policy for a decade in Western capitals wasn't regime change, as if thousands of men were not trained in CIA bases in Jordan, in Operation Timber Sycamore, as if the US and its allies didn't facilitate a billion dollars in weapons transfers to this war to that end. It didn't work. And look at where it got you. Half a million dead, food insecurity, arms proliferation, instability throughout the region. If you want to help Syria lift the sanctions, tell the US, Turkey, and Israel to get out of Syria, let them run the country for their own ends. Over 12,000 Gazan children murdered in a few months. UNICEF warns the Gaza Strip is about to see an explosion in preventable child deaths that will compound the already unbearable level of child deaths in Gaza. We have been warning for weeks that the Gaza Strip is on the brink of a nutrition crisis. Food deliveries are drastically inadequate. UN experts said last week that Palestinian women and girls continue to be raped, tortured and executed by the Israeli military in the occupied West Bank and the Gaza Strip. Women and children are being arbitrarily executed by the IDF. The Israelis are brazenly ignoring the binding ICJ court orders to halt the threat of genocide against the people of Gaza. Israel is failing to comply with its obligations under the Genocide Convention and yesterday the EPP won a vote to take the reference to the ICJ ruling off the agenda. The European Parliament is engaging in genocidal denial. We are watching the total destruction of place designed to obliterate past, present and future for Palestinians. This is pure evil and a genocide. On the 26th of January, the International Court of Justice ruled that there's a plausible risk of genocide in Gaza. It ordered Israel to stop killing civilians. Israel continued. So the legal obligations on EU member states are very clear. 
The Genocide Convention requires states to avoid complicity. The EU common position on arms exports bans exporting arms where there's a clear risk they'll be used to violate international law. And the UN has warned that such transfers must cease. Yet, France dissembles, hiding behind secrecy and Israeli assurances, while Germany has increased its exports tenfold last year, 90% since October 7th. Ireland doesn't even ask Butcher Biden what's coming through Shannon Airport from the US on the way to the Middle East. What sort of people are ye? In 1982, arch-conservative pro-Israelis Margaret Thatcher and Ronald Reagan stopped arms to Israel during a war. But in 2024, European Greens, Social Democrats and Liberals are arming a genocide. Shame on ye. International law and humanity requires lethal arms to Israel. Must stop now. Thank you very much. The US much. and our allies imposed unilateral sanctions to punish the people for supporting their government to strangle the country until the people see no other option but to abandon their belief that independence is possible. So that they come to the realisation that in a world dominated by financial capital, democracy means one thing, the exposure of your country, its people and its resources to the exploitation of the predatory global capitalist regime. These totalitarian coercive measures decimate development and undermine the basic human rights of entire populations. The right-wing forces besieging the country then blame the results on, of, on the government under attack. For 62 years, this has been the formula for Cuba. The US sanctions amount to crimes against humanity. Whether it's genocide in Gaza or killing hundreds of thousands of the weakest in societies through regime change sanctions in Venezuela, Iran, Syria, North Korea, Zimbabwe, Yemen or Cuba, the totalitarian US regime and their puppets spread terror and call it democracy promotion. Of course, the situation in Cuba is critical. The economic, commercial and financial blockade imposed on Cuba by the United States by over six, for over 60 years violates the rights of all Cubans. An estimated 500,000 people emigrated in 2022 and 2023. The important tourism sector hasn't recovered. The serious shortage of fuel has disturbed the distribution of food and caused hunger. The energy crisis has led to daily periods of mandatory power cuts, all orchestrated by US actions. It's a real bloodletting. And the extraterritorial sanctions imposed by the US on European companies and citizens dealing with Cuba Cuba are being implemented in complete illegality. If the EU cares about rule of law, you should be demanding a lifting of the blockade, not trying to interfere with Cuba's sovereign decision makings in terms of matters of foreign affairs. Cuba has withstood an assault for 60 years. It holds the solidarity of people all over the world and they will prevail. Resources are a source of wealth and trouble. Amnesty International has published a damning report denouncing shocking human rights abuses in Congo arising from the industrial mining of cobalt and copper for rechargeable batteries. These include the forced eviction of entire communities as well as sexual assault, arson and beatings. Decarbonising the global economy should not come at the expense of the global south. The transition towards renewable energy cannot be based on the same practices of dispossession and exploitation that currently prevail. In Western Sahara, Morocco's renewable energy projects are also used to greenwash human rights abuses. This infrastructure serves to further entrench Moroccan occupation with the obvious complication of foreign capital, complicity of foreign capital and the shameful approval of the EU. The EU allocates millions of euros in subsidies and aid to Morocco and to a multitude of European companies that invest in Western Sahara. This makes the EU a financier and accomplice to an illegal occupation. The EU is blatantly ignoring international law in Western Sahara. A humanitarian disaster is underway in the Democratic Republic of Congo with, <coughs> with the worsening security situation and a military build-up all away from the media spotlight. It's barbarism. How many tragedies do we need to ignore? The International Committee of the Red Cross says the DRC has one of the highest numbers of forcibly displaced people in the world. The UN says that the DRC set a new record for the number of children killed, mutilated, abducted and raped last year for the third year running. Insecurity is fuelled by a web of geopolitics and rivalries, but critically, the struggle for the country's abundant natural resources. A struggle, we know, which has led 
and enabled and bolstered by the EU support for Rwanda. We know that their grubby paws are devouring the DRC spoils, all to bolster the coffers of European multinationals. It's about time the EU started shedding its old colonial mantle, demanded the upholding of international law and get, let, leave Africa for the Africans. President, the Thank European Investment Bank has approved loans of 650 million for Israeli infrastructure since the la launch of its latest genocidal attack in Gaza. To give you an idea of the scale of the, what that represents, it's the equivalent of 90% of the EIB's total investment in Palestine since its first loan in 1995. From 1995 to date, it's invested more than 2 billion in Israel compared to 725 million in Palestine. At the same time, we've seen countless examples of Israel destroying EU-funded projects with impunity in the West Bank, assets worth hundreds of thousands of euros funded by countries like Ireland being routinely destroyed by settlers. You've even managed to improve and approve a loan to Israel's Luimi Bank for 240 million in December, the same bank which has frozen UNRWA bank accounts. I'm wondering at this stage as to whether you're actually complicit in genocide. There are 18 condemnations in the Common Security and Defence Policy Annual Report. Not one of them is directed at Israel. Yet, unlike Israel, none of the 11 countries condemned are carrying out a genocide right now. The report emphasises full support for Israel and for Israel's right to defend itself in accordance with international law. I'd like the rapporteur of the report to please point out what system of law he's appealing to, because nowhere in international law does it allow for a state to claim the right of self-defence against a threat that emanates from a territory it occupies, from a territory that is kept under belligerent occupation. Israel is a foreign nation illegally occupying Palestine. The Palestinians are the ones with the right to self-defense, not the Israelis. This parliament makes a mockery of the notion of international law of human rights. You are twisting international law to justify a genocide. And this then accuses everyone else of human rights abuses. This place is losing the plot. The rights of all people must be respected. As I've said many times before, Alexei Navalny should not have been in prison. His death in detention is appalling and an impartial investigation into the circumstances absolutely necessary. But while respecting the dead, we also have to be accurate in our memories. Was he Russia's democratic messiah? I don't believe so. A courageous activist? Yes. But what kind? A free marketeer? A fan of the 90s reforms that led to Putin? A race baiter? ejected from the Liberals who then founded a nationalist coalition with the extreme right and led anti-immigration rallies in the 2000s, a gun rights activist who made ads joking about shooting Muslims. Of course, none of this justifies his treatments. His rights are just as important as anybody else. But if Navalny had been a socialist or a trade unionist, I don't think anybody here would know his name. 200 Palestinian journalists have been murdered since October. They don't matter because our ally killed them. It's very clear we care nothing about oppressed civil society unless it's in our geopolitical interest. I voted against this. What does EU unwavering support for Ukraine really mean? If we were really prepared to support Ukraine, we would help to end the war. We have done nothing to bring about peace. We have opposed dialogue and diplomacy. We have supported the US NATO proxy war from the start. We have wasted billions of EU citizens' taxpayers' money on this stupid war. And where's it going? It isn't going in Ukraine's direction. Hundreds of thousands of working class Ukrainian kids are dead for no good reason. Ukraine has been destroyed. Western corporations from US and Europe are buying up the land on the western side of Ukraine for peanuts. This is madness. It has become now, at this stage, pumping more money into Ukraine is a money laundering exercise at this stage to feed the military industrial complex and just to please the US at a great expense to every citizen in Europe. This place is losing it. I vote against this. I think it's madness. We are in a rush towards enlargement. We're prepared to overlook rule of law, 
were prepared to overlook corruption, as we've seen with Ukraine's bid to get into the EU. We're looking to fast-track things. We're pressurising we're pressuring countries to behave in a certain manner so that they will get into the European Union quickly. Countries like Georgia and Macedonia, we're, we're badgering them. To, we're telling them how they should vote so they can qualify for EU, EU entry. And as for this, uh, the introduction of qualified majority voting in the Council for decisions relating to the protection of democracy, human rights and the rule of law, this is absolute nonsense. If we're interested in democracy, we wouldn't dream of bringing in a qualified majority voting. This is 100% anti-democratic. It's not the EU that we signed up to. As we are in the second anniversary of the Russian invasion of Ukraine, hundreds of thousands dead, millions displaced, and Ukraine lost as an independent state, yet the only solution that people in here can come up with is to continue the failed policies that you've been implementing for the last two years. So I voted against this resolution. I voted against it because only 93 people in here consider that it's necessary in all conflicts to undertake diplomatic efforts to end them. Because se only 71 people here regret that political and diplomatic efforts should are not being used to end the war. I regret the fact that the Parliament failed to take account the writing off and the cancellation of Ukraine's debt to adhere to human rights and labour rights and so on. The truth of the matter is that the only interests we're serving are the ones of the military-industrial complex, not Ukraine at all.